Hello skating fans, thanks a lot for tuning in. We are ready for a new GSM news show. Mitch Waymore and I'm Victor Helthorpe. We have probably been more excited about this one episode than any of our previous episodes. There's just so much to talk about. We had the World Single Distance and Long Track, we had a series of Short Track World Cups, and this is also going to be our preview show before the Long Track Sprint and All Round World Championships, as well as the Short Track World Championships. We also had Junior World Short Track. <laughs> it's been uh, really packed the last couple weeks, and uh, we still have another couple weeks to go in the season. I'm Laurent Zubray, and you're watching Global Skating Network. This is really what we've been looking forward to since, you know, last last World Championships, and it was quite a winful. Yes, I would say, I mean, we have to start off talking about Jordan, of course. We were almost going to try to do a whole episode and not <laughs> talk about it, but it's impossible. Uh, you know, winning three of the distances again, back-to-back uh, -back years. Last year was historic as it was. Um, and then he does so in almost a world record in the 500 on ice that we know was not incredible. Yeah, that was insane. <clears throat> the 1,000 was, uh, you know, 106 flat as well, and uh, 15 he dominated again. Like, how do you think? How do you think that this is possible? I honestly don't know. Like, I think all the different things that make you a good skater, they gotta be on point. To be, right. it's a, we're a lot of skaters in this world, and it's so even. And there's just results that's where you see Jordan being the gap from second to Jordan is larger than the gap from second to I don't know tenth, tenth or so. Yeah. yeah. So just, he is he is different in the way he skates. Yeah. Um, he has different skating technique. If you look at him, it's maybe not what you a bit like Mills. Fandible. It was not maybe what you would teach a kid if you're like, so how do you skate well? But then, I mean, obviously some things are really efficient, but he pops his recovery like really high. He has sort of an uneven rhythm a little in the turns. Um, it's interesting. I It might just be aesthetically what you see, but I I think that he like skates basic, really right? fluid. Um, I know what you're saying with that. Yeah, push. I think it's just because he gets everything out of every push <clears throat> that it almost is. It almost looks poppy because right. it's just a perfect yeah. full length. Um, but yet to see him really shift gears this year and attempt to uh, put some focus on world all arounds, which we'll see, you know, this that coming is, uh, yeah. <laughs> next weekend. But um, you know, him still able to go as fast as he does in the sprints and even faster. Like he was opening, yeah. he opened a nine four five, which to open nine four five, it's usually reserved for the like pure five hundred yeah. skaters. Not a lot of times you see somebody able to do that plus a thousand, that and plus a ten k, fifteen. <laughs> Unreal. He's gonna race yeah. five k's, ten k's. Uh, yeah. So, but I do think well, it makes sense where like he gets everything into it. Which is also like, if you're able to put that much power really into the ice, or yeah. well, if you're skating 30s or 31s in a 5k or a 10k, you're, you've got to use so little of your power right. to keep that speed where for a lot of us, especially like the specific long distance skaters, it's not that far from your tempo lap, your flying lap. Yeah. So it's like, well, we're at a high intensity where you can look at Jordan. I mean, we watched the 10k he skated live where he ends in a 28.4, yeah. hands on his back. Yeah. And it's still like, that looks like any other skater skating at 31. Yeah. He just, <laughs> because for him, that's still a slow lap. Yeah. And, but then I do think like the genetics. Completely different systems yeah. that he actually was using. A real yeah. aerobic <laughs> yeah. system until the end. Like, okay, we'll kick it up a notch just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's, so uh, it was fun to watch. And, <clears throat> you know, I, we discussed having a fear of like, is he just going to get bored? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. too good. Um, and kind of leading into our next skater. Shouting almost seems like uh, yeah she's, she's done it all. Yeah. <laughs> she's she's done it all and yeah. I think she's just uh you know ready to move on with life and it does happen more often than you think that like they go two years uh, see where they're at mentally and then yeah. either retire or keep training but I mean what a weekend she had you know the cool way to finish uh, a career yeah, yeah. <laughs> winning the three k. First three K gold at World Champs. First three K gold. Pretty impressive. like for how much she's dominated for how long. Yep. That that blew my mind a little. Then a yeah. disappointing five K. Disappointing. Yeah. <laughs> the silver she didn't win. But <laughs> yeah. But Joy, wow, what a five K that was. <clears throat> gold, 
silver in the 5K, gold in the TP, and pretty dominant fashion there. And gold in the mask. And that mask art was Best. was one of the most impressive races I have seen. Not only did she fall, she fell on lap two, so right after the easy lap. From, she, she was in first fall. position. Yeah, right. she was going for a breakaway. So she built up some good speed, and of course the pack reacted. So like. As she's going down, the pack is just hitting the accelerator, and they see who it is, of course, and I think that at least for another two laps, they were on the gas pretty good. And then after then, there were still a couple breakaways going for preem points, so the entire time she's catching back up and watching, like, I don't know if she's going to make it. Yeah. And then eventually she does, recover as well enough, and wins the freaking sprint at the end. It was uh, <laughs> the wild part. Hard. I remember one master that I've seen that I found to be exactly as impressive, and that was, I think, eight years ago, Irene Schaben crashes in a master walk off, and she catches up, and yeah. she wins it. Yeah. This is the second time she's crashed in a master and ended up winning it. Yeah, and now, of course, at Worlds, and with everybody watching her, yeah. like, <laughs> she's, you know, the one to beat, and then... Well, she still made her way back into the race and wins it was uh, pretty mind blowing. Yeah, beautiful way to uh, to end the career. Yeah, maybe it was the right timing with the, drops the, the mic and gets out of there. Holy cow! Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. But sad that she's gonna be no, no longer in the sport. One other person, little sidestep from Worlds. <clears throat> we saw Thomas Kroll. Yeah, he's gonna be retiring as well. Pretty sad because he's on the younger side and. Yeah. I felt like just because he had one bad season, I don't know if that been, was his reason why, but yeah. um, he obviously had a down year, wasn't even at World Cups really um, yeah. competing, and yeah, that's uh, unfortunate, but hopefully it's a good move for him. He's yeah going uh, straight into a pilot career. Yeah. Um, following him on social media and stuff, you would know that he's pretty big on, on the pilot part of his life as well, so maybe he's just really excited about that. But it's true, I think it's gotta be hard for Dutch skaters especially to, like, if you were a little off, when we were talking like he had an right. off season, he still skated a 145 in Hairpin. Right. To most other countries, like you would easily, all other countries, yeah. you would just, make a team. You, you, yeah, you did great. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad, yeah, yeah. but. It just also, yeah, yeah, to go from gold to not is, is a tough one. Yeah. And we saw it with Michel Mulder too. You know, he wins double gold at the games, or gold and silver, and after that, it was never the same. So uh, I think it's a it's a tough thing to fall from grace like that. And yeah. Try to work your way back, but I mean, yeah, I felt like Kroll still could have easily been yeah a gold medal potential again minus Jordan. Yeah, but Jordan <laughs> candidate. So we should also talk about Joy. We you know we're yeah. saying the little handoff there in the women's distance side. Um, she had an incredible weekend. That's all. Medaled uh, in the fifteen hundred. And wins her 5K, and then wins the team pursuit as well with Shaun. That 1500 meter was the same day right after the 5K. There was one men's race in between, and then she grabbed another medal. Yeah, and I think it's interesting because we were, you know, talking about her at the start of the year that like in the past she had been just disappointing. <laughs> like yeah, in comparison, she wins Junior Worlds. Yeah, against Yuta. With like, and she, she still has yeah. the Junior World records in three distances. And so yeah. you know, okay. You say a letdown yeah, when she's there. still really good, but like yeah. that tells you she should maybe one of the best yeah. skaters ever. Um, and this weekend, yeah. she, <laughs> she, she proved it uh, again, yeah. and yeah, it's been a really nice upward trajectory all season long. So congrats to her. And pretty yeah, pretty yeah, awesome yeah, skating. Right. We have one more person that won multiple distances. That was Davide Giotto. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really nice, <laughs> really nice weekend. Almost won the five k. Wins the 10K handedly and, and wins TP. the TP. <laughs> How many times have we have to talk? It's going to be the TP. Is it going to be the reason? Yeah, right. we were wrong. God, so we keep, wrong. Yeah, we keep uh, guessing wrong. I think. Yeah. I think we both said the US team was going to get the job done. Yeah. Um, you know, another something also we should talk about is how many people were the World, Cl World Cup classification winners that did not win True. anything at Worlds? Not even. Just not first. Not even with a medal. Yeah. Um, Morishige on the other side. Like there was a, down the list quite a few Giovannini, um, but no, very true. you know, yeah, the Italian team is usually good in the team pursuit, but um, this was, looks like they tapered perfectly well yeah. for the world. It could also just be like 
I mean, Giotto is, he's a 10k skater. And going in the TP, especially if you're competitive top three and now top one in the world, the lap times are, we're talking 25, 26 seconds per lap. I'm not even sure Giotto, I mean, now he is, but this season, before they really started working on it, they only used him for a season and a half to be able to go at those speeds and be comfortable at it. Like, it could just be really max it out. Yeah, yeah adapting, because we know he has the strength to. Yeah, it, it's, I think they were averaging, for the most part, 26-1 for their lap times. Also, the announcer in Canada was was not the greatest at keeping things uh, unbiased. <laughs> he consistently, whatever the Canadians were doing, was going to be the best. <laughs> and, <laughs> and he kept saying uh, the TP women, that the Canadian women were ahead the first couple laps, but the U.S. women were actually ahead. And it was just like, <laughs> it says fourth <laughs> next to their name right now. <laughs> they, they're they going to do great. <laughs> Don't, you know. Uh, and then uh, at just the end only. of the men's <laughs> TP, um, he said that it was a world record for the Italians, and it was not. Um, but not quite. No. <laughs> but, second and a half, but still, it was a good race. Just if you're new to skating, I must tell when you announced <laughs> world record in the building, and there wasn't. Well, <laughs> it wasn't. I hope the skaters didn't hear that. Oh, they they the oh yeah, a lot of people heard it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. The hands on the back. Yeah. Um, we saw it not just in more 5Ks, but in the Team Pursuit. Yeah, again, the Team Pursuit, they go fast. And we saw Connor Howe skate the entire TP on the front, hands on his back. We're talking hands on the back in the turns. Right. Which I don't think I would do one full turn with my hands on the back in that pace. While getting you? pushed yeah. to, you know, for the Canadian men, they did some 25s. Some serious balance there. So, so uh, yeah, that's... And, but they did really well. Realistically, that is probably the way to go. Oh, side note, also the, the announcer said that the Canadians came up with the pushing technique in the team pursuit. I have a feeling that that's not true either. Next year they're going to take the slingshot. <laughs> oh, they did say that? No, oh, that's horrible. <laughs> yeah, anyways, um, <laughs> but... <laughs> Yeah, this is the uh, home eyes of man. But it's really interesting, and I think that yeah. will probably be a trend, especially because it, it yeah. is faster. Um, this is the first time he was. I remember where we see non inline skaters transferring to ice do it. Like yeah. we, we talked about Team yeah, Team Lugano, Chris Rudy saying that they've done it, they PB'd, both uh, got top 10s here at World Champs, Team Lugano finishing fourth in the 5K. Very right. impressive for, I mean, first season in the A group, I think. Um, but we saw a, a Japanese woman, 1500 meter skater, do the whole 1500, both hands on her back, and then kind of how late. I think this is. Yeah. People are definitely testing it, and the more people that test it, the more people are going to see if it's yeah working out. Yeah, definitely seems to be a trend that will yeah. will stick. It'll be interesting to see some real studies once people get more comfortable with it. What is actually faster? Dynamically, uh, can't be the worst. Can't be the worst, but. Uh, yeah, I wonder in the long run is it more beneficial balance wise, whatever. But yeah. uh, basically, all the gold medals we haven't talked about went to Team Gold. <laughs> they, <laughs> that name was so well chosen. <laughs> yeah, no, Johan did an incredible job with his team yeah. at, at Worlds. Um, Miho winning, which was her first individual gold at World Championships, which blew my mind <laughs> that that was true. I just get one right for Olympic medals. But it seemed like tapering had not been her thing prior as right. and being prepared for the right moment. Last year, even, she did not win the 1500 at Worlds. Antoinette did. Um, even at the games, she didn't win yeah. the 1500, which also blew everybody away. But she crushed both the 1000 and the 1500. And her teammate, Han May, May Han, second place in both of those as well. She had never medaled prior to this season. Yeah. In any and she had medaled in 1015 and a 3K earlier this year as well. So he uh, yeah. did a great job. Ning had an incredible 1000. 1500 was a little bit off of what I think he's capable of, but I mean, that, that yeah, 1000 yeah. was pretty good. A nice PB there. <laughs> One side thing I want to mention too, uh, coming up for Calgary actually is the Calgary finale. You know, it's a race that's been huge over the years for 500 skaters maybe at some points. Um, but they've got the finale coming up again this year. Uh, they had missed it for a few years with different ice conditions or issues COVID. going on. COVID. Um, but it's back. 
and uh, there are tons of race opportunities. They're, I think they're offering the hundred. They're offering like the mini Sama logs of like 500,000, 15, 3K, the all arounds, different team events. So uh, pretty exciting and That's looking nice. forward to sending some people up that way. So if you haven't, go to Calgary's website and sign up for those races. Especially if you're coming from, from Europe, this is, I know there's a lot of Europeans that go there just for the fast eyes, for the cool experience, for the after party. <laughs> and I tell you, and then, <laughs> and in cool distances just but makes it even more fun. Like people, they, it's nice they make use of the fact that it's not like a World Cup or anything. They don't have to put in certain distances and just, yep. wouldn't it be cool they to see an elimination race? A lot of quads yeah. and yeah, just make it quick. And that's one of the most fun races I've ever been to was finale. Just tons of skaters, all skating for the purpose of trying to set PVs yeah. and go fast. So, yeah, pretty fun. Over to the short track results from the weekend. What did we have? We had the last two World Cups of the season, which also gave us some pretty solid indications who we're going to be looking for going into World Championships. For sure, the Dutch women, now with the Sand Schulting bag, are really strong in the sprints. They got away with the goals there. We had Kristen Sansas grabbing both the longer distances. Yep. That was pretty impressive. And uh, then we also saw some Polish skaters, both on the men's and women's side, to do individual medals, which uh, was a little bit of a surprise, especially with uh, without Miloszewska right. uh, this whole season. Yeah, the, overall this season, I thought it was interesting too that the short track season started before long track, a couple weeks before, and ended after. Oh, yeah. was like, so it's really spread out, the World Cup. Right. Which maybe is a good thing, maybe it's a bad thing. <clears throat> Might be better if it's condensed so when people are focused on speed skating or when they're focused on short track that it's like, okay, this is the short track yeah. season, it's not like sporadic, but then maybe it's also good for the skaters to like, you race hard, you got a long time off. A little race more prioritization, no, yeah. So maybe give and take there, but um, wouldn't be surprised if the ISU is trying different things to see <laughs> what's bringing yeah. in the most uh, amount of views. But uh, you know, overall, the Canadian men did super well all season. Thought uh, I think all of them medaled. Uh, Dubois was good. Yeah. Um, he was leading the Crystal Globe, <clears throat> but until the last minute, Park yeah. took it away. Um, but yeah, the, the whole squad did yeah. great. It's worth mentioning though that the Chinese team sent their B team. Right. Uh, the Hungarians didn't show up, and uh, those are probably going to be there for the World Championships. So I think that's going to be a really cool battle there between Canada and. And the rest of the world. Right. <laughs> we were talking about this before. I wonder if there's just not as much incentive. If you aren't aware, there isn't individual prize money for World Cups and short track, which is there is for long track. Um, and you also don't qualify for Worlds through the short track World yeah. Cups. Um, maybe you get your third spot, but otherwise, you just get your spots year after year. So it really de incentivizes You're just going for the fun focus at yeah. World Cups. Um, which is kind of a bummer. I, I would like to see a little bit more behind it. Um, and we've talked about it before too, that they, since you can only do two out of the four distances a weekend, yeah. kind of dilutes it, but that's also what makes me super excited for Worlds. Yeah, we're going to have the best. We're going to have we them race every distance. distance. And, and people coming back to like oh. throw their hat in the ring. Maybe Ariana Fontana is cool. racing. Um, you know, we haven't seen her all season long. We've seen her all season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the short track is training. We've seen her. That's good. Uh, but, but they haven't seen a race. And mm. then, yeah, the Hungarian, now Chinese guy, it's like, it's going to be a, a yeah. really fun one to watch. Suzanne, obviously, dipped her toes back in, skating well. So I would only assume that a little bit more training and prep for Worlds, she's going to be right up there. Yeah. So, Even though we didn't see the best, some of the best skaters here, we did see some pretty wild moves. My favorite is Jordan Pierre Gilles catching his glasses that were like tapped off his head by the Kazakhstan skater. He got whacked pretty good. That was pretty impressive. <laughs> but like, honestly, he didn't even like get phased at all. It just was like a so grab the glasses and continue <laughs> skating. <you know>? Yeah. <laughs> Mid 500. Uh, okay, that's pretty good. Um, yeah, and then. Not quite just, as smooth. Yeah. I short track. That. Junior Worlds? Holy cow, that was the scariest crash I think I have ever seen. And the fact that everybody came away like... Alive? Wow, we're good. <laughs> yeah. like, it was incredible. Um, but yeah, maybe don't show your parents that one. Uh. <laughs> Up next, we have the World Sprints and World All-Around Championships. Vic here is going to explain what 
each of those entails. The sprint combination is a little more simple than the all rounds. So the skaters will be racing a 500 meter and a 1000 meter on day one. And then on the second day, they're gonna be racing the same distances. So another 500 meter and another 1000 meter. Then those times are gonna be divided. So the 1000 meter is gonna be divided by two, making it the 500 meter points. So all these points then will be combined. So basically you adjust for it as if it was a 500 meter and then accumulate all those time points to see who has the least points and that will be your world champion. One example of that, just to give you an idea, a 35-0 500 meter time would be the same thing as a 110 for the thousand. Because that 110 would just be chopped in half. So you have a 35 point 500 and a 35 point 1000. So you have 70 total points from those two races. Basically the same idea for the all round. It's obviously a little more complicated because here we're dealing with a 500 meter and a 5k on day one and on day two a 1500 meter and then a 10k. The thing about the 10k is it's only the top eight skaters in the overall ranking that gets to do the 10k but then that 10k is going to determine who ends up in the first spot after all four events. We have seen in the past history has shown us that this is more of a distance skater event rather than a an all-rounder event yeah, not not necessarily yeah. all around but but it's a you know very historical event and it's a prestigious one to win so it used to be the to only win. event in skating <clears throat> right it used to just be all around yep so yeah back to the roots of skating yeah so let's start off with ladies sprint side what are you looking forward to there i am mostly looking forward to see who will be racing it i think miho Looking at how she skated in the 1000 this year, she's definitely the favorite for the 1000. The 500 meters, she hasn't raced any World Cups, but we've seen her do some pretty incredible times in Japan at their trials. Uh, so I think she could be really good at that, but also she is not bad in the 1500 meter and also the 3K, so she could sign up for either and she would be amongst the favorites here. Yeah, she's still undecided on which one she's going to lose. Not um, that far from it. As but well. I think it'll be a really good battle on the women's sprint side. Yeah. Um, hopefully Kimmy's foot is feeling better by then. We'll yeah. see. She is seated as the number one. If you look at right. season best, 500 meter and 1000, which is what it's all about. Yeah. Kimmy is number one. And I also think compared to some of the other girls, fitness will play a role here because you're skating a 500, a 1000, a 500, and then a 1000, and they all matter the same. That second 1000 does get taxing. Yeah. You know, it doesn't seem like it's as much, uh, you know, well, not long it's, races, but it's a lot of a lot of sprinting yeah. and it gets it does get tiring. So I do think it favors, if you can do a start, it favors the 1000 meter skaters a little more, especially right. in the second day. I do think Femka is also going to be a contender for the podium, and I think Yuta will also be. Good. If she finds her eight game. Yeah, her been, 500 wasn't bad at Worlds, yeah, um, not too far off time-wise. And again, because it's that Samalog, she doesn't have to be the very best in the 500s. Yeah. If her 1000s are on fire, she can mm -hmm. do something really good. And even Erin Jackson, you know, her 1000s are not quite as good as the others, but her 500s is really yeah, good. Yeah. good. So the combo of all four. I mean, right. as we explained here, Femke won the World Championship mm -hmm. by 0.35-ish which would be 0 0.7, almost a full second, yeah. that she would be ahead going into 1,000. If you took Worlds, uh, I would probably say Femke would have won yeah. with just her you know, standard 1,000 times. Um, that being said, Miho also probably yeah. <laughs> she would have hurt with her 1,000. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, also, it's also interesting that we're this is going to be held mid-March. Like, that is a very, very long season here. So it's also going to be a yeah. matter of like, who did their work in the summer, who's got the fitness to carry that through. Right. Men's sprint side, what do we think? I mean, because no Jordan is not in yeah. it, so I think it's gonna be really fun to see yeah. who steps it up. It's the first time in a while that we see a sprint where we don't know who's gonna win it. Right, I think Laurent's gonna be right up there. Yep. I think uh, Yenning Debo or Keld even. Tim Prince? Yep. I mean, Tim Prince had got second behind Jordan, and uh, they just had the Dutch trials where he was not far behind Kiel Noyce going uh, racing for a second place there. No, that's, I, I don't know who Both I would, of them are third for. I think I would go on uh, Dad Bod Laurent, but I, I'm not sure. It is not slow ice. Like, I do think yeah. Dad is in the sprinter's favorite. We're in the insula here. It's half altitude of Salt Lake City, so 700 meters above the, the sea. So it's not slow, which makes it a little easier for the sprinters to glide that last lap. Right, and so I think Shin Hama would be another one because he had an incredible thousand here in Salt Lake yeah. City. Um, I don't know what's been going on with him. It seems like he's 
not finishing races for yeah. some reason. I don't know if he's been slightly hurt. Um, in practice, he seemed fine and was doing some hard efforts. Yeah. <clears throat> but one thing that always know. I always found interesting with Shinham for the last handful of years is he is very much like this up and down. Rarely does really good thousand meters, but he has medaled multiple times at World Sprints. Yeah, or somehow. Yep. He, he's yeah. He does a solid five hundred and thousand. Yeah. So. I think with the combo of four, he could he could do really well. It's like long story short, Jordan's not there, and it's all of a sudden really exciting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Polish skaters, I think, could be oh yeah, could be surprising. Um, I mean, Martin could, oh, yeah. could be up there. Uh, so I really think it's going to be I think just a lot of different people. Yeah. Complete toss up. David Bosa has been yep close to the podium in both distances. Yeah, wow. So I'm still going Larry. All right, but we'll see. I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna go with God, Kill Noise. That's boring. What about the women's all around? I mean, again, it comes down to whatever Miho decides. No, I do think the main favorite here is Joy Boone. Yes. If you can meddle in the 15, if you can meddle in the TV, you can meddle in the 5K, you can, she would have probably meddled in the 3K. Uh, I think she's the big favorite here. Yeah, I, I think I would give the edge to Miho in the all around just because I think her 500 will be fast. Like more than the same thing. Yeah, I, I think she will get a good lead on Joy if she does it. Um, also, Antoinette could be pretty oh, surprising. Sure. She just won the Darce Charles. Right. 38.22 was her new 500 meter PP at sea level. Not so bad at all. Not bad. Not uh, bad even she's getting a great thousand at Worlds, yeah. but just off the podium. Um, I, I think it's going to be a, a really fun one there, too. Yeah. And no uh, Sablakova, as we said, uh, yeah. hurt. Uh, her foot, but shout out though to uh, Martina Sapiko again meddling in world oh champs. Gosh, yeah. She has won more than 150 medals yeah. in international races, World Cups, World Champs, European Championships, and also this was her 16th season finishing in yeah. the five top five to World Cup. We went on and That's verified insane. this, and it's true. And I was like, ah, maybe it's just a bunch of junior medals <laughs> yeah. or whatever. It's not. It, your one medal of all of that was juniors. All the rest is. Unreal. Senior, you know, some were international competitions yeah. that were maybe not as impactful, but so. there were over a hundred good races, well over a hundred good races that she has now been. So she might not make it to World's <laughs> Own, but she has a few accomplishments there, Nate. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh wow. Great. One another skater I want to mention is Mayhan. Yes, she could be a contender as well. Yeah. Second in the thousand, second in the fifteen at world. Um, can't yeah. imagine that. And she medaled at a World Cup this year in the three k. Mm -hmm. So I think she could be one of the mm -hmm. top dogs going into that five k and see where she's at ranking wise. And we have a good, also a good list of outsiders that could, on a good day, make the podium. Evie Blondin, um, Valerie Malte has been very consistent across all distances. On a good day, Rakna Biglin, she's won three k's, five k's, and fifteen hundred meters in the World Cup. Yeah. She's on a good day right now. She started out a little stronger, but she did yeah. also just she yeah, won we'll both the World Cup. But yeah, but like we said, does not mean you'll be a world first in the World Cup. Was not first at Worlds. Tough. I, I thought I heard that she was sick of some sort. Um, yeah, pretty unfortunate. But I mean, she'll be back. Uh, we know she's also skated well at Worlds, Jana. Yeah, yeah. Out of nowhere, fifteen. Yeah, that year. was crazy. <laughs> world Championship win. So it's not the moment or uh, not taking part in it. It was yeah. just something was up. So. Um, but okay, the most exciting part of this whole me skating season <laughs> by far. He's excited. Yes, I'm excited for that 10k where I think Patrick Rose and Jordan Stalls are going to be paired together, and Patrick Rose is going to have a 30 second head start, or Jordan, in the overall ranking. And if Patrick laps him, he'll win world champs. Yeah, I I hope you're right. I think it could be great. I my hope is that he got refocused. Well, both of them for that matter. But for Jordan to refocus after a Worlds that was that high, um, obviously Patrick won the 5K, the other distances, probably a bit of a letdown there. So maybe he had more motivation, or it could go both ways. Um, but man, it's going to be it's gonna be exciting to see. Patrick did some start work and some speed stuff here uh, before going to Worlds, so I think he's been preparing for it as well. I mean, it's going to be the first time ever we see the two favorites being so uneven in terms of what kind of skater profiles they are. Right. We have a 5K, 10K world champion and a 500 meter, 1000 meter world champion. 
each other. Dude. I had a bit of team <laughs> going against each other. He's just going to nah. be so far ahead after the 500 to 15. Yeah. That how much can Patrick catch up? But like, if you look at the PBs, Patrick's PB is <laughs> more than 40 seconds closer than Jordan's. If you would have taken Worlds performances, yeah. Jordan would have won. I'm confident in that because yeah. also a 5K without that thousand right before. Sure. Um, I think it'd be no contest because this 500 was also a 33.6. Uh, <laughs> so I think that the lead he would have had from the 500 and the 15 would be too much for anybody to take over. And also, um, yeah, it's not like Patrick's 10K was too fast. No. Yeah. Um, but that being said, Patrick had to do a 1500 right after his 10K, um, and so that was probably impacted by it. So, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. It'll be good. It'll be so good. I, uh, all four, all four of the men's and women's sprint yeah. and all arounds. I, none of them are guaranteed in any. So. It's really a big thanks to Jordan Stalls also, because he could have won the sprints combination skating backwards almost, and then we would have. Probably expected Patrick Rose to win the all rounds, and he just yeah. made this whole weekend so much more exciting. And I think that is what shows that this kid is going to last. Yeah. Like the fact that he knows, yes, you would win world sprints hands down. Everybody knows it, and he's not picking that route just because it's an easy win. And right. he's going to try to throw his hat in a ring where, I mean, the kid just opened 9 4. <laughs> and he's telling him he's got to do a 5K and a 10K oh. in back to back days. Like, is this Usain Bolt signing up for the marathon? The yes. Like, that's what level he's at right now, is he's giving away the easy ones to go for the challenge. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. <laughs> and, you know, again, I think if he even focused on it one more year, yeah. it would... You'd go either way, yeah. I mean, um, but I think now's the time. He's young yeah. still, and yeah. Thanks to uh, him for making this a fun... It's going to be a fun show. These World Championships also mark the end of the ice skating season, but also marks the beginning of the inline season that we're also looking very much forward to. It's gonna be a lot of exciting things. Some of these long track skaters are also gonna go back to inlines and we're gonna see the usual suspects battling it out in a whole new Marathon League as well as the European Cups and of course the championships. It's also a new team in the inline world called... I have no idea. Wicked Thank you for bearing <laughs> <laughs> What is it called? Wicked Bearings. Yes, right. Josh has a great logo he made on uh, After Effects. But Peter Michael's on that team. Two girls I don't know. But that is all you need to know. And before we end the show, we want to leave a little teaser with you. Viking Skating has just kind of published. We have a little information beforehand. But we've seen some photos of a brand new Viking blade. And this is pretty interesting because at the moment we're almost all the skaters in the world are using the same two blades from Viking, Sapphire and Icon. And Petter Kongsau, as well as Viking themselves, shared this photo on Instagram of a brand new Viking blade and what also seems to be a brand new Viking bridge. Yeah, talking to Nils, I think it's okay to say <clears throat> that the new blade, not sure the name of it yet, but it's gonna be somewhere in between the Sapphire and the Icon. I think a little bit closer to the Sapphire, but um, yeah, somewhere in the middle, and I think that's a welcome yeah. addition because people kind of can't decide between the two, or they bounce back and forth, so maybe it's just kind of the, the middle catch-all. Uh, yeah. Right. So, pretty exciting. Yeah. Hopefully we can get our hands on some soon. Test them out. And we'll let know how good they are. Do we need to do our trivia? What is the <laughs> trivia? <laughs> next trivia question for next week is of all Across all the distances, which is the oldest time that still is in the current top 20 of the fastest skaters across all the distances? When was this set and by who? Do you know, Mitch? We talked about this. Hint, neither <coughs> of us can pronounce her name, its name correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to do a trivia? Or that was the trivia? That was the trivia. Oh, okay. Let us know in the comment section below if you got the right answer or the wrong one. We'll be happy to correct you. Thank you all so much for tuning in as always. And be sure to comment below the answer or any other things that we may have gotten wrong, which seems to be a common theme with us. Um, but yeah, we're really excited about the races to come. And yeah. uh, let us know which ones you're most excited for. In return, we're going to let you know what's up in the speech skating universe. Thanks for watching.